Hello everyone and thank you for coming to my talk. My name is Audrey Mercier. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at CIRAD in the Forest and Societies Unit. I will present you today a study about the assessment of causes of tropical forest degradation using remote sensing data. We are all aware of the importance of deforestation around the world, which has drastically shaped tropical landscapes. Here, I would like to emphasize on the remaining tropical forests that are for most of the regions in a heavily degraded status. As you can see, degraded forests are dominant in tropical forest landscapes. In 2015, they represent around 76% of total primary tropical forests. And selective logging is the main driver of degradation as it affects around 20% of tropical forests. This degradation triggers tremendous impacts on ecosystem services. For carbon emissions, Bashini showed that 68.9% of overall forest carbon losses come from degradation. Degradation also has impacts on biodiversity and local to regional water fluxes and climates. There are more than 50 different definitions of forest degradation. In our case, we used Errol's definition that forest degradation is a process related to the accumulation in time and space of anthropologic disturbances, which implies changes in the structure of the forest and does not entail a change in land use. In this graph, you can see an example of a trajectory of a degraded forest. If we consider a conserved forest, it can be slightly degraded by selective logging exploitation using management plan or strongly impacted by exploitation without management plan or multiple uh, selective uh, logging. From there, there are several possible degradation trajectories that are accumulation of disturbances varying according to their intensity, nature and frequency. Fire is another disturbance that strongly destroys the structure. Other regeneration trajectories are possible. If deforestation is now slowed down, most forests are in degradation trajectories that are increasing. Different methods exist to measure forest degradation. Most of them use optical data. Direct approaches focus on characterizing the state of forest canopy and structures. These methods are usually based on very high spatial resolution data such as LIDAR or UAV data. They aim to measure the biomass level or the canopy structure using textural analysis. Indirect approaches aim to characterize degradation processes. They mostly use optical uh, indices of canopy disturbances and or change detection methods to detect forest disturbances, such as logging activities or fire. Other studies also focus on landscape metrics to characterize the level of degradation, fragmentation for example. But such methods usually rely on independent datasets to validate but also to calibrate the model developed. And these studies does not provide information about the causes of degradation. Thus, the objectives of this study are develop an automatic method without training data based on historical optical time series to detect small forest disturbances and assess the causes of forest degradation using spatio-temporal indicators. The study area is the municipality of Paragominas, located in the Brazilian Amazon. Once entirely forested, it became a regional center for timber production in the 1960s. Deforested areas were then dedicated to livestock production and more recently to large-scale agricultural production. Paragominas was selected because of its diversity of degraded forests, as you can see from Forest Stewardship Council, FSC, Certified Forest, to highly degraded forests. Forests located in the western parts of the municipality are exploited by the Sikel Brasil Verde Madeiras Limitadas. 
a major timber company operating in the Brazilian Amazon, which has been certified by the FSC since 2001. Optical time series acquired by Landsat 5TM, Landsat 7 ATM Plus and Landsat 8 Oli from 2000 to 2017 were used in this study. The spatial resolution is 30 meters. The images were selected based on the percentage of cloud cover, less than 10%, and based on the season during the dry season from May to October when logging activities occur. Three scenes were necessary to cover the entire study area. Different algorithms have been used in a complementarity way to detect forest disturbances. First, we use the algorithm developed by Popier to detect logging tracks. This algorithm uses spectral indices to enhance contrast between bare soil and forest cover, as well as morphological filters, for example, elongation filters. Second, an automatic methodology uh, developed by Baraldi was used to assign Pixel to up to 46 semantic spectral categories, exclusively based on spectral words. Then, pure end members were automatically identified based on this pre-classification by identifying broad classes of mineral, vegetation, and water shadow. Finally, we relied on spectral mixture analysis to detect forest disturbances characterized by the presence of bare soil within forest cover. The spectral mixture analysis was adapted from Arvoreal and aimed to identify the fraction of mineral vegetation and water shadow for each Landsat pixel. All images were masked using the 2017 Prodes mask to consider only primary forests and to remove secondary forests. Erosion and dilatation filters were then applied on mineral mask images to enhance contrast. Finally, a self-organizing map neural network was applied to identify forest disturbances. To identify the causes of forest degradation, we develop an algorithm that links patches of disturbances whose separating distance is less than 500 meters. We first traced disturbances uh, networks and a buffer zone was then drawn around each network in order to identify potential disturbance areas, as you can see here. To discriminate burnt areas from potential disturbance areas, we use the modest monthly burnt area product. All disturbances isolated outside buffer or burnt areas were then removed. Temporal indicator and landscape metrics were then computed to assess the causes of forest degradation. We computed the cumulative number of disturbances, the frequency of disturbances and the intensity of disturbances. As you can see, the method allows the detection of logging and fire disturbances and more particularly of logging tracks, log landings and logging gaps. Moreover, you can see a typical case of a conventional logging in the SQL company with a management plan. The pattern presents an organized structure. You can also see an illegal logging area with a more random and less spaced out impact structure. The logging impacts located in the SQL company are in accordance with the SQL management plan. The year of uh, detected impacts correspond to the year indicated in the SQL data. Moreover, you can see that uh, each area of uh, SQL is only exploited occasionally. While the illegally exploited area was exploited several times during the period using a random structure. Here you can see an example of a landscape matrix reflecting the intensity of disturbance over time. This metric allows us to identify the area exploited illegally and the area exploited by SQL. First, illegal areas are characterized by high frequency and intensity of disturbance. The conventional area by low um, frequency and high intensity of disturbance. And you can see the positive effect of the certified forest management techniques. Over the 17 years studied, this indicator shows that FSC forests have only been disturbed once with low disturbance intensity.
In conclusion, the method allows first the automatic detection of forest disturbances without training data. Second, the discrimination of two causes of forest disturbances, fire and logging, with different intensities. High for illegal, moderate for conventional, and low for certified logging. This method is an interesting tool for the management of tropical forested landscapes with two applications. First, to gate forest management in specific area of the territory by promoting actions to protect forest against fire or and fight against illegal logging. And second, to estimate carbon fluxes emissions from forest degradation. I thank you all for your attention. I will now take any questions.